Now we turn to a follow up to a story KSHB 41 has followed for years, for five years. The district attorney who handled the deadly police shooting of an Overland Park teenager now under investigation. Caitlin, I know you covered this case extensively in recent years, including talking to that young man's mother. We all remember that. Yeah, we've talked to her multiple times now in recent years. So Kevin, what we've learned is that Johnson County District Attorney Steve Howe is being investigated by the Office of the Disciplinary Administrator. That's a watchdog agency whose primary role is to investigate allegations of lawyer misconduct. In this case, the ODA is investigating whether Howe engaged in unethical conduct in his handling of the police involved shooting of John Albers. It's been five years since John Albers was shot and killed by an Overland Park police officer. The teen had been experiencing a mental health crisis, prompting a welfare check at his home. But before police could announce themselves to Albers, he began backing his parents' minivan out of the garage. That's when Officer Clayton Jennison unloaded 13 shots into the vehicle, striking and killing the 17-year-old. He felt like uh, he was going to get run over, that the vehicle was going to strike him. And um, we believe that based on the evidence that we have available, that that was a reasonable belief. That was District Attorney Steve Howe's statement in 2018 when he announced he was declining to file criminal charges against Officer Jennison. But years later, a statement made by the Department of Justice following their investigation into the case seems to dispute that. When you line those two statements up side by side, the facts contradict themselves. So I decided to file a complaint with what they call the Office of the Disciplinary Administrator. Four months after the filing a complaint Topeka, with the ODA, Sheila Albers received a response that the office the would be conducting a formal cases. investigation. So it looks as though the question is whether or not Steve Howe engaged in unethical conduct. You believe he has, why? I do believe he has uh, because in the professional standards um, for attorneys in the state of Kansas, there is a standard um, saying that they have to be truthful and accurate in any statements they make regarding a case that they're working on. And I feel that Steve Howe misled the public. Specifically, John's mother points to these two documents. One, the press release issued by Howe's office in 2018 that says the officer, quote, was standing directly behind the minivan, which, quote, accelerated toward the officer when he fired the first two shots. Meanwhile, this statement released this fall by the Department of Justice states John Albers, quote, began to slowly back the minivan out of the garage, adding that the officer, quote, stepped out of the minivan's path when he opened fire. I mean, those are very different stories. But are those differences enough to be deemed unethical conduct? That's a question we pose to UMKC law school professor Steve Lieben, a former judge who now teaches legal ethics. I don't know the enough about the specific facts of this case. Um, what I can say is that legal ethics rules prohibit attorneys from engaging in dishonest conduct or misrepresentation. And that's true whether you're in your private business dealings uh, or in your public role as an attorney. We also reached out to Steve McAllister, the former U.S. attorney who referred the Albers case to the Department of Justice. He told us, quote, it is not uncommon for people to complain about DAs or prosecutors, but it is uncommon for ODA to open an investigation, especially when the situation did not involve actually charging or convicting someone. As for any possible disciplinary action, should the ODA determine an attorney's behavior is unethical, that would actually be up to the Kansas Supreme Court. They have the final say here. I reached out to District Attorney Steve Howe, who told me he can't comment given the pending investigation. The city of Overland Park similarly has no comment, and I have not yet heard back from the Overland Park Police or the ODA. We do want to remind you, this is just one of many stories the I-Team continues to follow. If there's a story you want us, the I-Team, to look into for you, please send us an email to investigators at KSHB.com.